Hello my soccer universe, <laughs> what a Champions League week and this time, usually for the review video, I usually try to make a headline or a thumbnail that refers to just what happened on Wednesday for, you know, uh, being, the, uh, being the more pertinent uh, at, at the point. But all the good storylines were made on Tuesday in a way, so I'm wearing a jersey from a team that did well on Wednesday. Actually, by my calculations, was even the best mover, so their chances overall have the most improved, which are, of course, Dortmund. But as I said, the big stories were definitely all happening Tuesday and all, and as I made in the short video, to the Italian teams, Inter and Napoli winning in completely differing fashions but in in a way that it was impressive nonetheless inter getting a win at home to barcelona yes there was some luck involved in some dodgy refereeing but overall i think inter deserved that win napoli go to amsterdam and destroy an ajax i think this was their biggest defeat in ages uh, I think uh, many, many, many uh, Dutch football fans probably even enjoyed it, given that Ajax, uh, the, start, the status of Ajax in the Dutch game as the overwhelming uh, team there. But they won 6-1 and it was every bit deserved. It was overall a pretty good we, uh, midweek for Italians because also Juventus won. And of course, there's one Italian team that did not win. And that's the other story. And, you know, we're going uh, more or less through here. Milan did not. I mean, uh, partly it was in, in injuries, but partly it was just that uh, they could not cope with Chelsea overall. And yeah, it uh, was a little bit of a sobering moment. I still want to withhold any judgment on that yet because of the injuries and also because of the simple fact that this was the one game. When I look at the entire Champions League group stage, I, I think all away games can be tricky, but that was the one game. This is the best opponent in the group. That's probably the one that you can lose. Losing it by three goals, that's maybe where many would uh, say, yeah, that was maybe a little bit uh, too much. We had also pretty, we have two really exciting groups. That is one of the Chelsea Milan group where Salzburg are actually at the moment um, the leaders. But then there's also the group with Spurs and Frankfurt and Marseille in there that is also wide open at this moment. And then we have two teams. Manchester City and Real Madrid, who are more or less already qualified for the next round because the opposition uh, is just not good enough, it's got to be said. And especially in uh, terms of Man Man Manchester City, this time it was Holland for only 45 minutes. He again scored two, two goals. It just it feels like a cheat code. This guy feels in every regard like a cheat code for the game. I would say I'll tell you more stories when we run through the games. Uh, Bayern's 5-0 destruction of uh, Pilsen was very much like uh, it was when what they did on the week weekend to Leverkusen. I mean, in 30 minutes it's 2-0, Sané, Sane, Gnabry, Mane scores one. Musiala goes even scored uh, off, uh, uh, is even not counted. Then uh, Lira Sané and even Chupa Muting, after 60 minutes the game was done. Bayern again looking impressive, but again, uh, I think they they need to show this more consistently. I have the feeling. Uh, way more interesting was the Marseille Sporting clash because at the beginning, a it already started with a significant delay because Sporting were delayed to come to the stadium. Uh, stadium was empty because of all the trouble between Marseille and Frankfurt the last time around and they were already on probation and then it starts with the worst possible start you know OM are not winning in the, in the Champions League an, anymore and within a minute Trincao had given Sporting a lead but then uh, uh, Dan the Sporting goalkeeper completely imploded uh, first off he wants to kick out uh, and uh, uh, hit Alexis Sanchez who scores immediately equalizer from from that he wants to really play play down Alexis Sanchez 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 Later on, it could have been much, 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 much worse for uh, Sporting uh, with Alexis Sanchez even with me, me missing a, a sitter. But uh, he also insists on Bamba to make it 4-1. Then we come to, I would argue, that's the standout result. I knew Ajax, Napoli, that's of all the six games in the e evening, that's the game to watch. There will be goals in there. 
I did not expect it to be one-sided. And even when Ajax took the lead in the ninth minute, completely against the run of play, Napoli were really the better team, uh, team at that point. And I think uh, Taylor was not very happy that the goal was given to Kudus because he just deflects it into the net. Um, but at that point, I already had the feeling, yeah, what is this going to be? Then, um, I had the feeling it was, again, against the, the, the run of play and you didn't know where it will this be going. Uh, for Napoli, because we have seen in the Champions League before, they perform well, and then uh, they just fold now. They did everything, but they continued their way. I really love the equalizer, the, the way that Raspadori heads it, heads it in. Then uh, Quara, uh, I think it was a corner, Di Lorenzo heads that, that, that went in, and then the goal by Zielinski showed you all the trouble that Napoli caused for Ajax. Acres of space. Anguissa just slices through, and Zielinski has ample of space to pull it into the net to make it 3 1. And I think if there was a possibility to concede, Ajax should have probably done this at the half. Then Zielinski can come down and dumble it. It doesn't change much. Uh, Anguissa immediately to uh, Ra Raspador and Quara, although he is slightly injured, gets it to the 5 1. And then uh, Giovanni Simeone lay, lay down, make, make 6 1. And of course, there was a Tadic uh, yellow red in there as well. Which, yeah, uh, I think Ajax, this is the, 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 the performance that we have seen in the last few years coming from Ajax that they go and perform extremely well. And now this has been done, done to them. And if you are not watching my Serie A videos, I repeat myself. What the incredible thing is that this is a Napoli team that lost three icons. They lost Insigne, which was the local superstar. Uh, he lost Rhys Mertens, a beloved, reliable goal, goal scorer um, in Naples. And they lost Koulibaly, their uh, general in defense. And they are better. They are better. And I don't know where this will uh, carry them in the Champions League because they don't have a good track record in the knockout stages. But it surely will carry them into the knockout stages. Uh, and then we, we got to see an uh, absolutely impressive display. And people in Naples at this moment are, so, are surely very happy. It probably should have been also a similar scoreline for Liverpool against uh, Rangers. Both Scottish teams not looking good. I mean, uh, it's great for Scotland to have two teams in the Champions League, but both are not looking up to par. A freak from Alexander Arnold. I was really happy for him because of all the stick he's re receiving. There are many chances that they were missed. Uh, Nunez among them. It ends a Salah penalty to make the score and 2 0, but honestly, uh, it should have been much higher. Liverpool was really dominant with that win, basically. Liverpool underlined that they are the, um, the, probably the second force in there. Yes, they have to survive uh, in Amsterdam in, 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 in a way, but I think Ajax is totally shell shock, and we saw it already in the league that they don't quite look right at this uh, stage of the season. I also, uh, this is something maybe that you guys can can feel. What would be relationships between Liverpool and the Rangers fan? I have to think that you know Ra Rangers are very much uh, pro, um, you know, pro union. Whereas Liverpool fans, I gather, uh, have a lot of connections to Ireland and 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 so on. Is this a could this be an iffy relationship between those two fan bases or not? That would be interesting to know. Uh, if you have any insight, I would like to know that. Um, there's one team that I'm forgetting about, honestly, and that's Club Bruges. And I'm a little bit annoyed now that I didn't mention them. They are also sensational. They are full points in their group, in a group with Porto, Atle um, Atleti, and Bayer Leverkusen. And they have nine points already. And on top to top that, fully deserved. In every game, they were the better team. And that's a team that has lost actually quite some good players like the Ketelare to Milan, but they got Ferran Schutzkler, who completely lifts him to the next level. And uh, he assists the first goal through Sova, and then he scores the second one him, him himself. And when it was 2-0, it was every bit deserved. What were those ugly jerseys for Atleti? Don't want to see them ever again. I'm afraid we will do, do so. Atleti had a chance to uh, to come back. Griezmann, I think there has been now, he can play now because there have been some agreement with uh, um, Barcelona that they have to play pay less or, 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 or whatever. 
he puts his penalty against the crossbar and there was nothing really happening. Atleti is another team where I really don't need, know where they're going and a little bit also the reason why I'm still not yet quite into La Liga. Uh, a really weird game, especially first half, was uh, the clash between Porto and Leverkusen. Well, um, Hudson actually gave Leverkusen the lead, but it was uh, not given for a foul in the, in the build-up. Then Taremi uh, scores a goal. However, it was also chalk chalk because in the box just, just before was a handball. So it is instead of goal for Porto, it is penalty for Bayer Leverkusen that Patrick Schick then sees saved. And gives you all the all you need, you need to know about the confidence lacking within Leverkusen, uh, Le the Leverkusen squad. Uh, then the game, uh, it was overall relatively even, uh, but then uh, as soon as Zaido then makes it 1-0, uh, was always going port, port this way, and they win it 2-0, and Gerardo Sinoxiane is fired uh, consequently. And is replaced now by Xabi Alonso. Not the only firing. Uh, we already said Inter Barcelona. Uh, it was a game where Barcelona a, did not really have a plan. I felt this was not good, and you had Petri up there, but uh, with so many cross, I think they had 35 or 36 crosses against the Inter defense, where they have all those towers back there. This doesn't make any sense. It was basically give the ball to uh, the De Dembele. He crosses it in, and Inter. Uh, uh, puts it away, and Inter just kept it tight, kept uh, kept waiting for it for uh, for the game, and let Barcelona come, and then hit them all on the count counter attack, and in the end, uh, one the goal came through Chalanoglu or the Vermin as I like to call him, uh, to make it one nil just before the half time, and yes, Barcelona should have gotten some. They did not play well. They should have gotten something. They had a goal disallowed with a phantom handball by Ansu Fati. Yes, you see that there was a deflection from, from the end. That's why it comes to uh, Petri and he can pull it in. Um, I think I could understand this a little bit, but on and as I found this very nitpicky. I think if that goal stands, Barcelona go on to win this game. I gotta say that too, despite them not playing well. Um, and you know all the refereeing controversy that we'll that we'll talk about short, shortly. Also, it's largely a smokescreen for a really not not a good performance for Barcelona. And again, uh, again, it is that Barcelona um, in the Champions League away from home do not really show up. Um, and then I think the, the the big one was that uh, Le Le was a handball in the box uh, from an Inter player. Um, that I saw the first replay and I thought, yeah, this is a handball. Then I see a few more and I, uh, did he touch the pad? I think it was not conclusive enough. Now I I have not seen it back, but I hear enough uh, that seemingly it was pretty clear that it was a handball. And then I wonder why did VAR not give it. So yeah, uh, big win for Inter. I still think Barcelona will go through in that ever because I think they will beat Inter in the return leg and then I think uh, the way the fixtures play out, uh, it will be uh, more in Barca's than in Inter's uh, favor to go through. Um, Frankfurt 0-0 against Tottenham, not much to say. I mean, there were chances uh, left and right on both sides, I mean to say, but it was not a, the, uh, a super game, but it was also not the, the typically boring nil-nil draw. So, going over now to the Wednesday action, we had Salzburg having putting up a really fight, a really big fight with Dinamo Zagreb, who were probably a slightly better team in the first, first half, but in the second uh, half, Salzburg increased the pressure, had a pretty big chance through Suchic and then a really stupid penalty. Uh, gives Salzburg uh, the lead through Okafor. I mean, the way uh, Ulmer is hacked on that one, you can kind of do that. Salzburg, uh, Zagreb, they're throwing everything forward. Sal Salzburg, even having chances, can, 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 can convert. They get the equalizing goal. However, it was an offside uh, in the build up where, And so, in that sense, Salzburg hang on. Uh, there were also a few situations where Köln had to come up with a save. Um, at the same time, the other Red Bull team, Le Leipzig, got a 3 1 win over Celtic, but it was an uh, expensive win because um, Gulashi came off with a uh, ligament injury um, and, you know, Nkunku scores, but then a really nice goal um, 
played by the two Japanese, then uh, Jolte converts after the uh, half. May, may mix it up, but in the end, uh, Le Leipzig win. Of course, it has, has been said that the uh, winning and the go ahead goal to make, make it 2 1 was one of those. Uh, Joboschlei scores a goal, but Silva is just offside because he's in the path and he's offside, although he ducks out of the way. So he's just for offside. The goal is disallowed. The goalkeeper wants, wants to play, uh, Joe Hart wants to play it out, plays it straight into Soboschlei, who plays it to Silva, who makes it uh, 2 to 1. A, a, a absolute mad sequence there. Because you just had the goal uh, disallowed and then you end up con conceding. Uh, and it's the two players that were already involved in the previous goal and then Andre Silva makes it 3-1, uh, scoring two. Uh, he doesn't score all, all that often. I already said quite what Chelsea Milan. I mean, I said already more, more or less what Nibes said. It was a flat performance by Milan. Uh, and yes, injuries play a part in it. That uh, Tata Rosano did not control the box that well. Also has to play in the. It, he doesn't give you the, the, the security, and it's exactly the sequence leading up to the one nil. I think it started actually with um, Benazer being put under pressure in his own box, getting the ball some way away. Then it comes to a throw in. From the throw in, there's a cross that Andres uh, Thiago Silva almost puts. Yeah, in is saved. I mean, Tata Rosano made some saves, but um, and then there were two corner kicks, and then both again, Thiago Silva gets his head onto uh, the ball. And I'm wondering, where's the defending? Why is no one picking up Thiago Silva? And of course, from, from the, the last one, the ball then comes to Loftus Cheek to, to uh, a goal line scramble, and Fofana puts it into the net. And that actually settled the game. There was, in a way, almost no way that Milan can come back, although. They got early on Leao running against the Chelsea defense and just before the half, one more time. Although Chelsea at that point probably could have led already uh, by two goals. Uh, but Leao run, it comes to the Ketelare where, uh, who sees his effort saved by Kepa and then on the rebound, Kronic puts it over the crossbar where he has the open goal. If that's 1-1, one, one, I think this changes the complexion of the, uh, of the game. It was not a deserved one. However, uh, but it would have changed the complexion of, uh, of, 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 of the game. But then Reese James simply took over. But I have, have, have to say that both of the, of the goals that Chelsea scored in the second half, I wonder where was, was, was the defense. Tomori is not really living up to uh, his current, to his uh, status that he had at the end of last season. It's okay if he's not an ordinary for, but he, all you have to do is mark Obama Young. This the way the second goal comes, where Reese James has acres of space to uh, cross in, and then there's only Obama Young to look forward to. And he gets two to the ball, may make, make to make it two nil. And then uh, Rhys James is sent by Sterling, and uh, it was a special uh, strike, but uh, didn't sit well with me overall. Uh, so yeah, it, it was not a good, good, good performance. I always felt that Milan tried to take control back from Chelsea, but they spilled the ball too often. They felt under pressure. Last thought is uh, last two, two, two thoughts. They're a little bit more random, a little bit more personal. Is there are quite some connections between Milan and Chelsea in there. I mean, Obama Young, uh, he went to the Milan Youth Academy. You see Tomori going from Chelsea to uh, Milan. Uh, you see um, Thiago Silva, who was a Milan stalwart. I, 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 this was the beginning of the end for Milan in, in, in a way when he left for PSG. So uh, th this connect there are uh, quite, quite, quite a few connections there already. And I know that the club is also pretty good. And all also, Milan should thank Chelsea for buying Lukaku last season because that was surely a big stone, stepping stone in Milan winning the title. I'm absolutely convinced with Lukaku, Inter would have looked uh, slightly differently. Let's put it that way. Uh, and then the other one is, I think with all these connections in there, Chelsea is at the moment the only team that I can think of where there is a player that uh, was from the Milan Youth Academy, from the Lusk Youth Academy, <laughs> playing at the same team. And I'm talking Obama Young, I'm talking uh, Kovacic, and maybe you can put Thiago Silva in there as well. Uh, so uh, where both of my fav favorite teams just suddenly come, come, come together. And uh, you may know that Chelsea has been for a long time, and maybe to a degree still, still is my favorite team uh, in the Premier League. Um, Real Madrid... It's staggering this was only 2-1. They had so many chances, should have scored way more goals. They get the W, they more or less qualify. 
uh, Zubkov's goal double special. Uh, kind of a scissor kick. It was a great finish, but uh, that goal line should have been much higher, like Manchester City did. And this time again, five, 45 minutes, Holland. It was so funny. Uh, Dortmund, we'll talk about them in a second, took the lead in Sevilla and the, com the, the commentator said, let's enjoy Dortmund being top of the table until this Holland guy comes and scores. And then you hear other show, goal in Manchester. And of course, it was the Holland guy who scored. It, it's almost a headline when he does not score. Or it's almost a headline that he didn't score in the second half. This is what, this is the crazy part that we are now uh, in. And again, I think it's, yes, he has a good track record in scoring and it's largely helped that he's playing for their best, the best team in the world and that there are players that are just looking for him and he can put those balls in. However, it is just, it's, it's just a cheat code in, uh, in so many ways. Um, the two goals by Mares and Alvarez are almost also, uh, as with the own goal, Manchester City just too good for Copenhagen. Um, Dortmund, the scoreline is also rather uh, impressive, 4-1 away to Sevilla, but the game was not as, um, as uneven as it looks here. Um, Rafael Guerrero gets the early goal for Dortmund, however, then there were many chances in between um, where Sevilla could have e e e it was also an NDC red card in there that had, 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 had to be taken back. So uh, there was a lot of things happening. He got only then just before the half when Bellingham uh, in a brilliant way converts it, uh, co converts the second goal and then uh, uh, Mukoko with a brilliant uh, piece, piece, piece of skill sets up uh, the Yemi that the game goes squarely Dortmund's way. But that game was a whole lot, a lot more open and NDC then pulls one back but it was never enough to go back. And then Julian Brandt with a rare um, header. And this was low, but take his last game for Sevilla. And uh, what I hear is that he's going now to Wolves. And uh, he will be replaced at Sevilla, most likely uh, with some Paoli. So that's going to be interesting. The I would argue that the biggest game on... Wednesday was not Chelsea Milan, uh, but ac 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 actually was, uh, or Sevilla Dortmund, it was Benfica against PSG. I know uh, outside, but uh, Benfica are a force to be reckoned with, and I think it's between those two who will win that, that will go out and make first and second place. Benfica really gave PSG trouble, and the first time that PSG, the Sevilla front three, could compose themselves, where it went Mbappe, Neymar, Messi, is when, when it was 1 0, a little bit against the run of play. Then PSG had a little bit more, more control, but Donnarumma had to make a few saves until he didn't, and the Danilo on goal gives uh, Benfica 1 1. Um, the longer the game went, the more control PSG got, but it was always Benfica was threatening then on the counter, and it ended with uh, rather a heated scenes. A 1-1 draw, that was probably the right result. And as I said, I think this Benfica team, and they were in the qualifiers last time, this is a better Benfica team. Uh, watch out. I think this could this team could cause uh, an upset in the same group. You will get a 3-1 win over uh, Maccabi Haifa. Much. They had some work to do. But I think for, for me, that this is Arabio scores the two goals and all goals were assisted by Di Maria. But yeah, um, we'll probably talk a about more Juve more when they have played against uh, Milan. So we have the following standings here. Already talk, talking a long time, but you know, uh, Group A is pretty much straightforward. Naab, Naab, and Liverpool should go through their also favorites, and Ajax really have been given a big minus there. And you see, as Club Bruges also look really good in moving through, and it's a three-way race. I think it can, will come it down again between Porto and Atletico Madrid, and that will be on the last match day. Uh, Group C, as I said, at the moment it looks like Inter. They have the slide, slide much, but I have a feeling that Barcelona will beat Inter, uh, and they will then own the head-to-head, -head, which then might see Barcelona go through. But this is a cru this is probably the crucial game come coming up. Barcelona Inter, uh, who, um, a point for Inter will see more or less Inter through because I think they will get the points against Pilsen, and uh, it would need then a Barcelona win against Bayern Munich to really uh, get going. Um, wide open group is Group D. Sporting still under under control, but uh, don't discount uh, either one of the other teams. 
Um, yes, Sporting and Spurs are at the moment the favorites to go through through there, but I wouldn't be surprised if it is uh, the other two teams that make it out of there. Um, similar thing for Group E, where Milan are only now the third fav favorites going in there, uh, being a third place. Um, I think you probably could lose the game to Chelsea, but then you need to remain. You need to win the remaining two games. Uh, that will see you to ten points to go through. Uh, but also will largely depend what Salzburg will be doing. I think a point against Chelsea would be important, and if Salzburg and Zagreb play a draw, then Milan would move out of this group. Uh, Real Madrid more or less through. Uh, it is yes, technically they can be caught, but uh, there's no way that they are not going to get out of this group. Same thing for Manchester City and Dortmund also looking already very very comf 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 comfortable with a five point cushion. So uh, win against Sevilla and you're also through. And then, as I said, uh, PSG and Benfica will move out of the group on the bottom. I think it would take a major miracle for you uh, to get out of there as well. Uh, as for positive and negative change, you saw a zero background. It is Dortmund, uh, Club Bruges, Inter, Napoli, Chelsea, Liverpool uh, that have been the best performances. And let's add OM in there as well that had the best improvements overall. Uh, and on the negative side, you see I mean, their opponents, Ajax, Barcelona, Sevilla, Atletico, uh, Milan, uh, to a certain degree, Zagreb, uh, did not really get what they needed. Um, as for the character current favorites, uh, top has not much changed. It's still uh, City, Bayern, PSG, Liverpool, now slightly ahead of Real Madrid. But, you know, uh, let's see where this goes i still would actually uh count madrid high but it is those five teams that are currently set for the title um napoli is moving up consistently but i think napoli is not strong enough to make a champions league challenge and i'll leave you with the upcoming games which are just the reverse fixtures of what we had uh, as i said i think they're pretty huge games between milan and chelsea and um psg benfica is just uh, for the group win um, and uh, you know, um, but Chelsea, uh, Milan, Chelsea, Chelsea seems to be one of those do or die games. Um, and then the other one is Barcelona Inter. That's a huge one. I think actually Napoli Ajax might be again entertaining. It's fortunate the early kick off, but there might be more goals in there. And I think everything in Group D uh, is interesting as far as it goes. So yeah, that was it from me uh, from uh, this Champions League midweek. It was interesting to watch. I'm not happy with most with some of the, the results. You know, among the teams that are in there, Milan and Ajax are probably my favorites in there, and they both got their beatdowns. But on, on the other side, it was an interesting watch overall, and I'm always happy when the Italian teams are doing well, although my favorite Italian team should do best. That's how I see it. In any case, please drop a line below if you had anything to add. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so to get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!